He was born in 1710 in the little town of Gelterkinden. And then, uh, since he was illegitimate, his mother tried repeatedly between two different canons, between Bern and Basel, to get his citizenship. And he was unsuccessful until he was almost 25. Even though they belonged to the Roman Catholic Church, he, he followed a, a pastor who was a real evangelical pastor. And all the um, bishops in Basel kicked him out of Basel because of so many people flocking to his church. And he ended up in a little church outside of the walls. And they, the bishops got them to close the walls, the gates of the walls, at night so nobody could go out to to their to his church. Well, in the summertime, they would just go out and camp under the trees in front of the church and worship in the church with him in the morning. He was um, born to a mother who had, he did not have a father. I mean, obviously, physically he had a father, yeah. but it was a father who took no responsibility. He was a traveling salesperson, and uh, so he did not acknowledge his son or offer any support. So essentially, uh, Hans George Gerster was raised by a single mother, a situation that is not uncommon in our own country in these times, but back then it was a scandal. If you were born illegitimate, number one, you were not a citizen. Number two, you could not vote. Number three, you could not hold property. And oftentimes, you could not get a job. They were like a person, or rather more like a non-person in that country. Uh, his mother tried very hard through the court system to get the father to acknowledge paternity, which would then have made uh, Hans George, a legitimate, legitimate person, but he declined over a period of certainly probably more like 15 to 20 years. <clears throat> when Basel finally said, enough, uh, you know, you, you, we, we will not grant you citizenship. So within a few weeks after that, they bought a ticket from a ship that was going up the Rhine to, to Rotterdam to go to the New World. And uh, he and his wife and his mother, the three of them, uh, and we have records of his wife's Eva Giesing, her manumission ship to, to sail, but Hans didn't need one because he was illegitimate. And so they traveled almost two weeks on the Rhine. Normally it wouldn't have taken that long. And on that little ship, 19 people died. We don't know if there was a, an epidemic of uh, scarlet fever or spotted fever. And in Rotterdam, they had to wait some time before they could get on the sa sailing ship that was seaworthy to go to the New World. And they finally did on the Princess Augusta. And then from there they sailed to Cowes, England, where they refurbished and restocked the ship with water and food. And then we had to wait for a good prevailing wind to, before they would leave again. And then they set out for the New World. It took them two months. And within sight of land, they dropped anchor. The next morning when they picked it up to start going up the, the uh, Delaware, they, hit, they went aground and everybody thought they were going to die. So they went out to sea again until for several days and until they uh, came back in near Hanelopen, which is uh, in Delaware. And then they traveled up the uh, Delaware to Penn's Landing in Philadelphia and landed in 1736, September the 15th. That night, some people came aboard and quietly took all the uh, things that they had bought in Europe to start housekeeping in, in America, and they stole them. 
because the British were saying they're not British goods, and uh, even though they had registered them in Cowes, England. And as a result of that, they learned very quickly to change their name from Gerster to Castor, make it sound more British, not quite as German. George took a position as an indentured worker uh, for a period of time just to earn money to uh, take care of his wife and his mother. I don't know how long that period of time lasted, but eventually he made pretty good money and he was able to buy a house and a farm and uh, became a farmer. And finally they moved to uh, what is now Oxford Circle in uh, Philadelphia. And when he died, he owned a 202-acre farm with a sawmill, and he died a very rich man. But in the meantime, he had signed a petition, uh, one of eight people who, who uh, petitioned the Moravians to start a, the first women's school in America. And then in 1770, he was one of four who signed a petition to start a church which was called the German Calvinistic Church. Now it's called the Frankfurt Presbyterian Church. Um, I know my father built some really interesting bridges in Cincinnati, Ohio, when he was younger. And uh, my mother was a concert pianist. Probably the members of Hans' Hans' sons and grandsons that fought in the revolution, and also the parts of our family that fought in the American Civil War. There were at least four that fought at Gettysburg alone that I'm aware of. Well, perhaps there have been many casters that stand, are outstanding, like generals. There were generals and uh, architects, physicians. Right now there's a Bruce Caster in Philadelphia who's the Attorney General from Montgomery County where Philadelphia is, and I've heard that he, he may consider running for mayor. That's today. But uh, in yesteryear, I think one of the most important casters was Horace Caster, who was supposed to be an architect that designed many churches and schools and, and important buildings in Philadelphia. Somebody said as many as a thousand, but I, don't, I think that's an exaggeration. That was Horace Castor. 